record. Hi, everybody. Welcome for this new Jenkins Inform meeting. Um, we have a few things that we have to discuss uh, today. So the first one that I want to announce is that um, firstly, we'll sponsor the Jenkins project. Um, so they will give us $1,000 credit per month that we can use. So the good thing is that we can use it for um, all website like Jenkins.io, plugins.jenkins.io, documentation site, and so on. Um, what I initially wanted to use it also for the mirrors, I don't think we'll have enough credit to, to, to do that. So as a first iteration, I just propose to, to work with the people um, uh, involving with Jenkins.io in order to enable the CDN for that. Um, and then we, we just add more, more, so more websites, more websites um, one by one. Um, but yeah, so basically the sponsoring is secure for at least one year and then it will be automatically renewed. Um, the only thing right now is, so I got approved for the uh, of sponsoring program. The only thing is we still need, I still have to find uh, the correct uh, Fastly accounts um, because apparently my account is not, um, I don't have the credit on my account, but this is something that I'm, I'm trying to solve with Fastly support. But yeah, that's a really great improvement and I'm really happy to share this. So if you're involved and you want to participate, I can also add you to the, to the Fastly account so you can also have, I mean, I have access to the dashboard, help configuring that stuff and so on. So, so that's regarding Fastly. Um, I don't know if it's me, but each time I move the automated release at the end of the meeting, so I can keep you busy and can keep you during the meeting, but someone to systematically quit at the second level. So I will just put this lower. Um, so is there a question regarding Fastly and using a CDN? I mean, I hope that you all know how it works. So yeah, but basically it's just a tool that, it's a tool that um, create a copy of, of the website on servers closer to where people are located. Um, so it drastically increases um, the speed of the, of the service. And so we don't have to replicate the same. So it will be really interesting, I think, for people in Asia um, as they are, um, quite far from um, Jenkins.io website. Um, but yeah, and in the end it will beneficiate everybody. So that's a great move. Um, so the next topic that I wanted to discuss was, um, and it's kind of also related to the automated release, but it's who has access to the Kubernetes cluster. So right now, in order to deploy a new application, you have to go to Jenkins refresh charts. You just, I mean, everything is explained there, but you define using HAM file, uh, the application that you want to, to have running on the Kubernetes cluster, and everything is going there. Um, until today, I was, I was, the, only, uh, I was the only one uh, being able to run kubectl commands. So I was the only one to be able to, let's say, delete a pod, restart a container, whatever, if something wrong was happening. Um, and so basically, I decided to add two new people, Tim Jacob, who helped a lot with the Kubernetes cluster since uh, several months now. Um, and I also ask uh, Mark Jackson to participate. So the idea is to review uh, the configuration of the cluster and, and I mean, make suggestions about how we can improve the process and how we can make it more secure. Um, so yeah, basically the, that's the, the, main, the main change um, there. So if you see anything interesting, if you have any suggestions, uh, feel, free to, feel free to ask. Um, and yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. Thanks. Thanks for your help here. Um, while I was also working on the Kubernetes access, I also did some work on Azure. Um, so I also granted access to Marky and, and Tim Jacob on the Azure access. Right now, it's um, mainly Azure function for Tim Jacob and Kubernetes for, ja for Tim and, um, and, and Marky. Um, so I put in place a process so we can add more people depending on the service. Um, I will just try to keep the number as low as possible. Uh, so if you really need to have access uh, to the Azure account, um, I'm really glad to give you, uh, depending which kind of access you ask. And then once you don't need those access, I really invite you to, to mention that and say, okay, yeah, you don't need it. So we can, let's say, for example, disable your user account. So it just reduces the risk of, of having someone accessing the, the, the account. Um, but yeah, meanwhile, um, I, I, I did some work on, on having more people on, on the Azure accounts. Um, while I'm talking about the Azure account, there is also a fun, uh, not, not so funny, but um, we are having some issues with the Amazon account provided by Cloudbees. 
because the sponsoring was uh, approved by uh, Amazon was for some reason assigned to other uh, cloud biz accounts. So we are currently investigating and um, why why the cons why the, the credits I mean why the credit was used by the other services uh, the other accounts and we'll soon find a solution. But yeah, this really bring the, this really highlight the fact that we need to move the, the Amazon account to the CDF as it will simplify uh, the management of it and it will be clear um, what it's what it's um, the Jenkins OSS and what is uh, is in this case. Um, but yeah, we thought that it would be easier and um, quicker to, to do it to work this way, but we may, maybe we, we were wrong, but yeah, this is something that we have to to, to solve now. Um, any any question uh, until now? Yep, so I will just continue. So otherwise, uh, as you as you saw um, on the on RC, the main activity has been working on the Jenkins core automated release. Uh, we made um, a, a lot of progress and we are quite close to the final solution. So um, just a quick overview of what we did. So um, regarding the release process, so really releasing Jenkins, not packaging, but releasing Jenkins, we had, um, additional steps to really visualize which certificate we are using to sign the WAP file. So now if you have access to the release CI, the Jenkins IO, so you have access to the service as long as you are in the VPN, you can, you can check, you can double check that we are signing with the right certificates and the right GPG key. And, and the next part is working on the packaging part. And in this case, we are so as a um, reminder, we are packaging right now for Debian, Red Hat, OpenSUSE, and, 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 and Windows. And so the idea is to build a package, to sign the package, and to publish the package. Um, the main work now is to first validate that we are publishing the package in the right location. Um, so for that, we deployed an, a virtual machine, a copy of of package or Jenkins IO. And we are uh, publishing packages there, checking that they are correctly signed, um, they contain the right file and so on. Um, we are almost at the end. I think the last time I checked, uh, we, the issue was with uh, the Windows packages, um, but yeah, it's something that will be fixed soon. Um, otherwise, the, the main other area where mainly Mark is still working on is to test, um, test the release process. So. We have different things that we can test here. We can test that um, we can correctly build packages. Um, for that, uh, I, I, I have the core compose and I have a few scripts that I have to put in a Jenkins file. So the idea is to be sure that we can test um, the different packages. We can sign them with a dumb certificate and a dumb GPG key. Um, and the next step is to test that we can also install the, the generated packages in different distributions. So for that, Mark open a PR. And so basically was able to test uh, for Debian Ubuntu. Um, it was not possible to test for CentOS because by default CentOS does not allow you to run systemd in site container. Am I right, uh, Mark? Uh, you're muted, Mark. You, you are correct, but I took the added step of putting an install test for, for CentOS and for OpenSUSE without a test for services. So the, it can do the install without systemd, and it can then use the RPM verify tools to check the thing. So that piece we're doing, uh, we it still can't check that the services start and stop because CentOS Docker images and OpenSUSE Docker images don't by default provide systemd. Okay. So one is not a blocker to go into uh, to go live with the release process. This is something that will I mean greatly uh, stabilize. Um, for the modification for next um, iteration. But um, yeah, that's, um, the, as I'm saying, it's not, not a blocker for now, but if you have some time to review uh, those pair, we'll put some link in the document after the meeting. Um, if you have some time to review and, and you want to help on those um, and see how we can um, automate those tests uh, in either CI or the release environments, but so either in CI or Jenkins that you are with this environment or somewhere else, which makes more sense maybe. Um, um, yeah, that's that's the right moment to say. Um, so on my side, the next step will be to document a few things like um, what it what it looks like to I mean what are the different steps to 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 release basically which uh, where you're supposed to go which button you're supposed to click and what are the things that you have to verify in order to be sure that everything is working well. Um, so once the documentation um, is uh, written. Um, 
we should be able to, to, to really update the different uh, credentials in order to go live. So just to be clear here, the different credentials that we decided to not put um, to still use um, temporary credentials are the SSH key used to upload packages to package.jenkins.io. So in the current state, we want to be sure that we don't accidentally push uh, our testing packages to the real production server. Um, we also have to define, um, to specify the Maven repository that we are going to use for the release. Um, so basically, we just have to grant act permission to the current um, user that we configure for the release. Um, so, so SSH to, to upload files, um, the, um, the Maven repository, and I think it's pretty old, um, maybe we'll review some settings, but this is something that needs to be highlighted um, in the documentation. Um, is there any question um, so far until now? Yep, so I can continue. So um, one of the things that I've been asked, that I asked to, to Marty was to, to review, um, to have someone else who did not work on this, I mean, who did not work a lot on this part, to have some uh, external eyes. And so we can just try to see if everything seems to be fine, secure um, enough. Um, and so Marky now should have, um, when he has some time, will have, um, has all, should have all the permission to, to audit the release environment and yeah, to make suggestions. So we won't go live um, as long as um, we don't have a green light. And yeah, we, we were still in the process to have uh, as many review as possible. Um, but yeah, we are getting closer. I will be setting up a, uh, an audit documentation, uh, an audit spreadsheet that I'll be performing the audit and I'll share it with, uh, I'll share it with you and then you can decide who else should actually see that audit. I do think it'll be good that once we do a cluster audit, we'll publish it and sort of say, you know, what we found and be transparent, but I'm going to leave that up to you. So the, the 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 basically to me the the the, the rules will just be like for the um, the document that we set up uh, to take notes. Um, so whoever is interested to participate can read the document, but as long as we don't go live, uh, we do not publish the document. Basically, got it. So, um, and that's that's pretty old, uh, I think, for me. Um, that's um, yeah. That's that's all for the Jenkins core automated release project process. So, um, yeah. Do you have any other topic that you want to bring or you want to discuss? I mean, if you're all good, then I think we can close the meeting earlier. So one time, two time. Thank for your time and see you on RC.